bloody thing. Why isn't it blooming well? Oh, oh, hello. How's it going? Yeah, today we are in the telephone exchange room at this museum's not obsolete because we're going to be building something that I think is going to be excited. I'm excited by this. It's going to be an absolutely lovely couple of days putting this together. If you watch this channel, you may know that last year I made an electromechanical visitor counter that had Nixie tubes as displays. This is a visitor counter for the museum. It has electromechanical memory in the shape of uniselectors, not these exact ones right here, but slightly different ones. And I did a video whilst making it outlining the functions and features of a uniselector. So maybe check that first if you're not aware what uni selectors and all that malarkey are. This visitor counter had quite a few different functions including storing a million jingles inside it. Yes, every single time it counts up the melody changes. So when somebody new enters the museum and the visitor counter gets pushed up one, it actually plays a jingle that is completely different to everybody else's jingle in the visitor counter. And it also had the function of being able to be called so you can listen to what jingle it's on via the telephone exchange. Very funky. But since I built the visitor counter and don't yet have a Nixie Tube Uniselector clock, we're going to build one of them today. Let's have a chat about how we're going to do this. So what is the plan? Well, it's going to be the same as the visitor counter. However, we're going to be dealing with different numbers on the uni selectors. In the visitor counter, each uni selector was counting up to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this would count up, so that would be 20, and then 10, and then 20, and blah de blah And then when it got to 100, it would count over the next one, and it would count like that, and it would count up to the next one, and it would count up to the next one, and it would count up to the next one, and it would keep on counting until we get to a million. A gazillion, a trillion, bazillion, ba doodly, boodly, 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 boo. And it keeps on going like that. But yeah, you'll see I've been making a little bit of a collection of uni selectors for projects just like this one. These are GPO uni selectors and they're going to be good to use because they use the same power, minus 48 volts, as the rest of the telephone exchange. So these will be a little bit more straightforward to use than the other uni selectors which were of mysterious origin. So in order to make this a clock, we need to receive a pulse that flicks through the first uni selector in some sort of time that is related to time you know mother time and that is going to come from around the corner in fact you'll see those little lamps up there they're flashing to the sound and time of these things right here these are the master clocks that are wired in and they're always going they're telling the time up there and they're ticking away happy as larry And these master clocks send out a pulse every second using these two contacts at the top. Then this will send out a pulse every six seconds and this one sends out a pulse every 30 seconds. The one that sends out a pulse every 30 seconds actually triggers the clocks. So when it gets over to the 30 second point, wait for it, wait for it, it's coming. It's that deeper groove tooth right there. Well, let's try and get it both in shot. Let's see if we can get it and wait for it, wait for it. It's coming and it clicks and it pushes the clock along. It goes via these relays underneath the clock that basically amplify. They basically relay the signal into 48 volts. So in our instance, that is going to travel over to one of these uni selectors and click them over. So the first thing that we need to do is get that pulse coming from that clock over there into one of these. First thing we have to do is get a wire with the pulses and all that stuff over to the uh, clock. I've got four wires here. The blue one is a 30 second pulse. This is a six second pulse, I think. I'm just gonna use that for something, I think. And then we got these two here, which are just the power. The red is earth, the white is minus 50 volts. If we just do this, hopefully we've got, we could power it. Hey. Now, if we get this lamp just to test it out. So if we put these in, that should light up, yep. And then hopefully with the green, that should give us 30 seconds, wait for it. Whee! So if we put battery in the 30 pulse on these two, we should get uh, the uni selector to tick over. So this first uni selector is gonna be triggered every 30 seconds. So we're not gonna have seconds on this uni selector clock, that's fine because it's not ticking over every second, it's ticking over every 30 seconds. It'll mean it'll last 30 times as long, which is cool. These uni selectors have 25 points that it counts between, so it goes one to 25. This is gonna act as the minutes in the uni selector clock. This one 
the next one along is going to act as the 10 minutes. Because it counts from 1 to 25, this makes an issue because we can't divide 25 into any sensical kind of time frame for the clock to count. So since this goes forward once every 30 seconds, when it goes forwards 2, it goes forwards a minute. So we're going to count up a number on the Nixie tube every two of these. And when we get to the last five, we're going to skip them by using the interrupter switch right here, which makes it go and skip them. After this, it's counting to the top, it's going to count the 10 minute unit selector. This is the one that counts to 60 minutes. So this counts up to 10 minutes. This one then counts up six times to six minutes. Now we're going to get another couple of wires and wire it into this uni selector. So when we get to the end of this uni selector, it's going to click this one over with, with any luck, fingers crossed. Let's just get to the end of it and see what happens. Yeah, did you see that? Uh, there we go, it ticked forwards. There was a little bit of a spark, we're going to sort that out with some spark quenching, but that means that every time this runs around, this is going to advance once. We're going to bolt it to this rack. We're going to get the uni selectors wired in first and then we're going to worry about the Nixie tubes because the Nixie tubes aren't actually the clock. This is the clock. The Nixie tubes are just the display. Okay, so technically we'll have all the parts for a 24 hour clock here. Let's get it wired in. Right now I'm wiring all of the red wires together via that turret board. This is strangely enough called earth and then minus 48 volts, which is called battery, is the black wire. It's because it's a negative voltage, but you can wire it the other way around anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Do it the way you want. So we've got these three uni selectors wired together to actually make a whole 24 hour clock. The first uni selector is flicking over every 30 seconds and every two clicks makes a minute. So every 20 clicks, which takes 10 minutes, flicks this second one over one. Then every six times this uni selector flicks over, which equals an hour, this one flicks to the next point once. Then this one counts to 24, equaling 24 hours. Even though these have numbers you can look at on the inside of the uni selectors, they don't 100% match up to what it's actually showing. Because for instance, this middle one flicks over every six times, but it actually only makes a full rotation every three hours. So these numbers don't particularly mean much. So we need to make a meaningful display. And that's when we're going to use the Nixie tube. We're going to use the same ones as in the visitor counter. I've 3D printed these little mounts that actually connect up exactly where the uni selectors go. So we can put the Nixie tubes next to the uni selectors. I designed these on the online 3D CAD browser on shape. I started by measuring this and making a flat square and basically extruding it. This all in all took about 10 minutes to design and it works pretty damn well. I've also made a box on the wall for 130 volts that we need for the Nixie tubes. So let's bolt these in and try and fit some Nixie tubes. I'm using ZM1040 Nixie tubes. I had these spare from the visitor counter. Well, they're not spare anymore, oopsie daisy. I figured out the pin out and then soldered a bunch of wires to the sockets and then had them dangling down. So when we put them into the 3D printed part, then we could pop them on and solder them onto the uni selector. We've now got the first Nixie tube wired into the uni selector that's over here. You can see that it clicked over then. This is the minute uni selector. It flicks forwards every minute. That means that this uni selector needs to flick forwards twice for this to change. So each of the numbers are wired in to two of the contacts on the uni selector, one after the other, so they flick through and so and so. The 130 volt DC that is required to drive the Nixie tubes, which is right here, is connected into the bottom of the Nixie tube. And then the 10 purple wires, which wire to the different pinouts for the different numbers, connect over to the uni selector, which then sends that power to ground via the flickety dickety doos. Now we need to wire in the next number right here, which connects to the second uni selector, which is gonna change every 10 minutes. We crack out another one of those 3D printed mounts and pop in another Nixie tube socket with all the wires dangling and pop in another Nixie tube and do the same again, this time with the next uni selector. We're only actually gonna be using five of the digits in this uni selector because it counts from zero to 59, zero, one, two, three, four, five. You'll see me soldering the wires over to the uni selector for each of those digits, one after the other. So when the digits the uni selector clicks along, it clicks to the next number. Right, so now we have the next uni selector wired in. This is only counting up to five, from zero to five. So it counts from zero minutes up to 59 minutes. Then it ticks along the hour numbers, which are over here. But if you flick it along, you'll see 
This one is wired in a little bit differently because it only counts to six. But remember, it spins around 25 contacts on the uniselector. So what I've done is basically split the uniselector into banks of six. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, go forwards an hour. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, go forwards an hour. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, go forwards an hour. And then you have four pads left over, so it goes and it goes back to the start. How that is done simply is by wiring every seven pads together because you need to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, advance an hour, and that's seven pads, and then you go back to the next one and carry on and so forth. Now we need two more Nixie tubes to wire into this uni selector to go from zero to 23, and that's the 24 hours for the 24 hour clock. You guessed it, it's the same old deal. We've got two more of those Nixie tube setups. Uh, I started by soldering the leftmost Nixie tube because that's only got three digits if you think about it. It has got the zero from zero, zero up to zero, nine, and then you see me clicking over, but, and then the one from a 10, up to 19 we're flicking it over and then a two from 20 to 23 uh, how i did that is i wired the first digit of up uh, about uh, i think it's 10 pads yeah 10 pads and then the next one up another 10 pads and then it, we have to wire in the other nixie tube this is the most wiring on all of them so we need to wire the zero to nine digits one after the other up again and then as you can see it's working however if you notice it's not gonna go after nine because we need to solder them again to the ones after that that correlate to 11 all the way up so i basically just ganged them up the same as the other uni selector basically wiring the one to the one and blah de blah and after that it's starting to work wait wait and it's flicking up so we got two rows on this uni selector actually controlling two nixie tubes which is different to the other two which are only co controlling one of them look at that lovely so now we've got all of the numbers put in you'll notice that it doesn't actually look like a clock there's just four numbers after each other it looks like it's saying 1934 now. <laughs> so what we need to do is actually make a signifier that this is a clock. In fact, I've started doing that. You'll hear there is a click and a clock and there is a relay over here. Uh, you'll see that I've added a little relay over here. And this turns on and off every two seconds thanks to a pulse coming from the master clock. Ooh. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that pulse to actually turn on two mini Nixie tubes that are gonna be sitting in between the uh, minutes and the hours. Or the, yeah, the minutes and the hours. So I've also designed and 3D printed this little thing, which is gonna house these little single pixel Nixie tube neon bulb thingamagoops. So these are gonna go in the middle and make it actually look like a clock. I designed it so they mounted directly to the mounting holes that are on the Nixie tube uh, holders. I accidentally designed the holes a little bit too small, but with a bit of heat, they fitted perfectly nice and snug. So it actually worked out in my favor. After soldering them over to the relay, so they turn on and off via the 130 volts, it turns on every uh, two seconds and it went from looking like 2003 to 2004. So yeah, now it looks like a clock. And then I did some wax lacing. I have to be honest, it was not my finest wax lacing job but it does the job enough it, it, it sort of looks like uh, you a bit of gammon <laughs> actually so maybe not fantastic but it, you know it looks all right enough and then i got a bit of plywood whacked a bit of wood stain over it put these two mounts on it and then bolted it onto that and bish bosh bash we've got ourselves a uni selector clock Ooh. so for this video this is where we get up to a 24 hour clock that is controlled by pendulums that control uni selectors which are then displayed by Nixie tubes, and they've even got the Nixie tube second clickety clickety in the middle. This was gonna be a lot more complicated, and in the future it may very well be a lot more complicated. For instance, I was gonna add a screensaver which would flick through all the numbers, like on the visitor counter, to kind of stop Nixie tube burn. But I don't know how prevalent that is because the display, the Nixie tubes, they're only gonna ever be on when the museum's open. However, the uni selectors will always be ticking because they're connected directly to the master clocks, which are always on, keeping time everywhere around here. Like I said, the initial plan was to make it a lot more complicated. This involved another unit selector after that would select all of the days of the week. So we've got a little uh, light show here that's got Monday all the way to Sunday. We were gonna do months of the year and dates and including leap years because we'll need a uni selector that takes into account February having 27 days in three years and then 28 days in one year. Then I was gonna use it all to control the timing of the Christmas lights at the museum. But as you can tell by the date this video is coming out, I didn't quite get it all done in time. Who's to say another rack below isn't gonna happen in the future? If anybody has one of these 
these racks that holds uni selectors that is the same size as this sitting around, please let me know because I'm looking for one because if I can find one, then I'm gonna make a bunch more uni selectors for all of the date malarkey and the Christmas light thing for next year. You may notice there's a big gap here. That's for another video. We're gonna add a musical aspect to this or at least a sound aspect to it, like the visitor counter where it plays a different jingle for every visitor. This is gonna have something along that line, but what that is, I'm not sure yet because I've got a couple of ideas. I won't mention exactly what they are, but one of them is reminiscent of a talking clock, quite complicated though, and the other one is for it to play the organ. Yet another complicated idea, but I just wanna figure out which of the ideas is the most feasible, so that will be going there in another video. Anyway, that's it from me and the Uni Selector clock. I've just gotta go and find somewhere to put it up. And yeah, if you wanna make one of these, grab some of these on eBay and give it a go.